Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a lovely little vignette with a cherry blossom tree. So grab your paints and let's get started. So before we get started I just wanted to do a little throwback and um, show you a little painting that I did on YouTube uh, in autumn. You can find it in the flowers and foliage playlist of just a, a sort of sense of the, a little watercolour tree through the seasons um, and that is there to learn but we're going to be painting in this kind of style today. Um, so I also want to show you this piece which is a painting that I have taught in sections on my Patreon so my patrons get to learn full tutorials, uh, full paintings like this because we have a lot more time on Patreon whereas on YouTube I like to keep things nice and simple and short and therefore Patreon is always there for you to go in more in depth but today I'm going to do a little vignette inspired by my little cherry tree painting here and maybe a little window in front. So um, if you are interested in actually going more in depth and painting things like this, then um, find my Patreon link in the episode notes and all the watercolour challenges, the watercolour tutorials are there from the very beginning. We're nearly two years old now and um, everything is there for you to access from the beginning. So you'll find plenty of things like this. Anyway, we're going to paint this piece today, focusing on this. So the first thing I need to do is to draw myself a little shape. So I've got a set square and I'm just going to create a little rectangle first. I say a rectangle, to be honest, it's more of a square shape. Gosh, the rain is really coming down outside. So if you can hear a little bit of a sort of thundering sound, that's because our beautiful British summertime has um, <laughs> has turned a bit. Um, so yeah, this is about three inches, um, seven and a half centimeters uh, all round. And then what I'm gonna do is take my compass and I am going to do a curved top. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we've got ourselves a little arch. The way I find that curve is I just measure the half point along the bottom and then that gives us a pretty exact kind of curve. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna paint a little scene. So um, I'm going to have a bit of a, a sort of baseline. And now I'm going to put in a cherry tree. So I'm just using my pencil. I'm going to have it just a little bit wobbly. So there's my trunk and then I don't need to draw in too many lines for the trunk, but I just want to make sure I've got a sense of where it is, where it is going. And what I want to do is I want to put in a little window just sort of down here. So you can sort of freehand it and then get your ruler in there. And I'm just going to create a little sort of rectangular shape again. I mean, you know what could be nice is we could actually mirror the the shape of the vignette. That's cool, isn't it? We'll put a little window in there, there. little window sill, and I'm also going to put in some window panes. So. Just doing this sort of rather roughly by eye. You know what, this piece is rather inspired by um, Mary Poppins books. They live, the family live on Cherry Tree Lane. And um, I always imagine this kind of lovely townhouse. And then just sort of roughly by eye again, just going to measure out some window panes. And then we will Oops, draw in that little window pane there as well. Okay, so I'm doing this sort of by hand, by eye. Now, if you are doing this at home, then this is the point where I would recommend you lightly rub out your pencil. Um, I am going to uh, just stick with this 
pencil line so that you can still see it. Um, but yeah, this is the point. A lot of people ask me all the time, like, how do you rub out all your pencil really easily? Well, it's really down to making sure you've drawn quite lightly in the first place. Now, the other thing you could do if you wanted, you could mask at least the square areas around the edge with some washi tape if you want to get a really crisp clean line I'm going to try and keep a steady hand and uh, get uh, just yeah try and keep the straight line just without masking okay so we can get rid of our pencil and now we're going to have a think about what we're going to paint first well first things first is I want to create just a little bit of a texture sort of on the the wall of the the building of the house so I'm just creating a, a warm shadow mix using yellow ochre Payne's grey and burnt sienna we want it really really dilute so you can see there's not a huge amount going on here and what I'm going to do using my size 8 brush is I'm just going to paint in sort of up to the edges there a little bit of texture nothing too fancy even though this is a fancy house and just blend it off a little bit you can see I'm just sort of scribbling with the brush it's really to create a a slight sense of a, of a base color and maybe a little bit of a texture on the wall but sometimes when you're painting pieces like this you just want a really really faint simple color to put down to, to basically mark out the the edges of the piece because with a lot of watercolor sometimes the charm is you do a nice uh, sort of loose raw edge of watercolour just fading off into the distance but today we're being very crisp about it so I just want that tiny bit of colour and then just adding a tiny bit more detail we're just popping a little bit under there a little bit just along the bottom and we're going to find that that's going to fade almost off to nothing I'm going to put a little bit under behind the tree but we don't want to overload that too much at this point so we're going to let that dry and whilst we let that dry we can start to mix up colors for our cherry tree so cherry wood is quite a cold dark color so actually just using the same colors we were using for the shadow mixes Payne's Grey Burnt Sienna together in a more concentrated form will give us a really rich deep dark colour and then very very thoroughly clean off my brush that's what the kitchen roll is for here you see to blot it off really make sure all of that colour has gone and now what colours for the cherry blossom itself now I've got permanent rose here which is a beautiful pink but I think the best cherry blossom trees are the ones which have all sorts of variety in the colour. So we've got opera rose as well, which is a real sort of fluorescent pink almost, which will give us lovely, bright, fresh highlights. And also alizar and crimson, which is much more deep and dark. You always want to make sure you've got a range of light and shade, but then the colours that I'm most excited about are actually yellow ochre mixed with permanent rose makes a really fun kind of blushy pink anyway so I'll get that mixed up wait for this to dry and then we'll get painting it doesn't take long for that to dry fully now I've got my set of trusty pro art masterstroke brushes which you can also get your hands on um, in my shop my Etsy shop and my online web shop um, I love these brushes they're, they're definitely down the like cheaper end of the range of watercolour brushes but I just think they are fantastic so and you can see them in every video I use so um if that's not proof of how much I love them then I don't know what is okay so I'm just going to now begin with my size zero brush with a nice sort of light and bright series of 
dabbing dots and splodges to create my cherry blossom. Now it's going to be something that you know takes a few moments to build up but what we're looking for is a sort of series of little dots like this that, but plenty of sort of unpainted space in between which is where the magic really happens that we can sort of put in branches which will cut through the very sickly sweet pink of the cherry blossom. Now I am going to be overlapping over the window that's very much part of the plan. At this point I'm just keeping it really nice and dilute because the colour will very much crisp up and even the faintest areas we will start to see a lovely a sort of watery papery edge. Now when we get to the edges like this just be a bit more careful. Here. So I haven't painted in that many branches, but I'm just getting a, a vague sense of the shape. So this is through using diluted um, mixes of the permanent rose, opera rose, and then very much adding in now some of the slightly blushier colour, which is the permanent rose mixed with yellow ochre and it just looks so pretty. So I'm gonna carry on painting all of that in, making sure to leave some little areas where we might see the branches, see the wood. And then we'll add some low lights. That has dried and now we are going to just paint in the washes on our window panes. I just love it when I'm faced with a piece like this and I'm almost spoilt for choice of all the things I could paint next. Um, so I'm just creating a shadowy blue. Um, that was a little bit of French ultramarine there, a little bit of Payne's grey. Just get a nice sort of fresh colour in the window panes. It's a sort of late spring day. I know we're well into June now and it, it is summer but and in cherry blossoms aren't you know 100% seasonal right now but that's the beauty of YouTube is I know that you'll be painting all the way through the year so what I'm going to do I've got my smallest brush here my four tenths and I'm going to paint I'm tilt it a little bit I'm going to paint just shy of the windows the window pencil and in doing so this gives me uh, a ready-made window pane and then what I'm going to do is I colour it in loosely and purposefully leave a bit of unpainted space there. So we've got a little bit of cherry blossom on top. So I work sort of fairly swiftly painting that little outline then clean off my brush get a bit of water on it and just work swiftly to fill in the panes of glass trying to avoid a sort of harsh outline and the reason I do this at this stage is because we're going to be adding more layers of colour to the cherry blossom but it's going to get trickier to paint in a nice sort of pale window pane and you can always drop in a bit more colour if you want there you go And I like the slight wobbliness. Of these window panes because when we rub out the pencil it looks so cool. So yeah, leave tiny bits of unpainted space. Give those glass panes just a tiny bit of shine. This is really what you want to have a small brush for to get the control. But the only challenge of having a small brush is, is it takes just that little bit longer to get 
your paint covering the area. So because this is a small area of space to cover, we're okay. But if it was any bigger, I'd definitely opt for a larger brush. So we've got a tricky one in here, but it's all good. And the other thing, because we are painting really translucently, it doesn't matter if you do get a little bit on the cherry blossom, because as I also said, we will be adding extra colour to the cherry blossom itself, so it does not matter at all if there's a bit of overlap like that. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we can put in our pavement. So I'm going to continue with the theme of my sort of uh, Cherry Tree Lane, West London Avenue, and we're going to have some nice sort of pavement paving stones. So I'm just going to draw in some lines that are just sort of coming out from the perspective of the the cherry tree there so they're just emanating out and then uh, I think that's all we need in terms of there we go so I'm just going to put in a few horizontal lines and we don't need much more than that and I'm going to give them a little bit of a golden glow so my shadow from earlier will get a bit more of the yellow ochre in there just a bit more just a bit more colour overall but getting that warmth in and I think size zero will do nicely and I'm just going to sort of again a bit like with the window panes sort of paint in a stone might take a tiny bit of darker colour just to pop in at the edges and then paint in the next one just leaving a little bit of unpainted space in between them just getting a hint of the darkness from the color I've mixed up for the actual cherry tree cherry tree wood And my aim with these is it doesn't matter if they bleed into each other a tiny bit, but my main aim is to very sort of roughly colour them in and while still wet just add in a hint of that darker colour. And apologise to anyone who will be watching the edges like a hawk and seeing if I'm actually managing to stay within them completely. I know one lovely lady said she was um, rather stressed out uh, when I painted my lighthouse a few months ago because I just I just painted over the lines once in the corner probably loads of you were like oh yes gosh I remember that um, and it was hard to focus on anything else after I'd done that so this is a little warning that might happen but I'm trying not to The best thing you can do, you realise, to um, get over that worry is to have a go yourself and then take control of the situation. Anyway, we'll get these painted in and then we will be ready to add all the lovely details. Now it's time to start adding a bit more um, concentrated colour to the cherry blossom. So I'm just adding a bit more um, pigment into my palette of the permanent rose here and alizar in crimson there and what i'm going to do with my two tenths brush is i'm just going to gently get back in there and just dab the brush so on the lower edges there's the alizar in crimson by the way i know i pronounced it wrong and I know <laughs> that it's it's annoying, but um, there are there are bigger things to be worrying about. I think in the world, so you don't have to correct me again because I know a lot of you do. Um, so I am now 
just finding places where I can just sort of create, it's creating roundness on the various sort of clumps of blossom. You don't want to be doing it everywhere. You also might want to use it to just add a few extra little dashes here and there. And of course, in the areas where we painted onto the tree, just on the window panes, it's a good opportunity to be able to just reinforce the presence of the blossom on top of the window. So yeah, enjoy it, have fun. And we'll get to the next section. That's dry and looking gorgeous. And now it's time to start thinking about the tree and tree branches. So I'm just re-mixing my little um, dark brown mix for my, for my tree. So I've got a size zero brush and I'm coming in sort of quite on an angle. And I just want to get that lovely kind of raw edge you get when you, you angle your brush low to the page. And now with a clean wet brush, just beginning by taking a little bit of that color and now a bit more of a concentrated colour and I might even take just even more of the Payne's Grey so we've got an even bluer shade. I'm just dabbing in to one side and now taking the faintest bit and just building up the texture on the other side. So I'm, it's funny, even though the tree texture is, is different to cherry blossoms, um, I'm still sort of dabbing the brush in a similar manner. And then it's sort of coming down into this area here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make that a little sort of soily uh, little sort of section. But let's have a look at the actual tree branches. This is the bit I get excited about because I think it all comes together in this moment. So you could use the rigger brush if you wanted. I quite like the control of having the, the four tenths just for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the path of one of my branches. Whether it's already been drawn in in pencil but I'm just going to have a bit of fun Placing in lots of lovely little branches. I find parts of this very satisfying. Um, what might also happen is you find you, you sort of add in a few branches and then you're like, actually, I think I want a few more bits of cherry blossom on there. So that's fine too. Um, and this is why it's so important to leave just little sections of unpainted space. And they don't all have to be like continual from the main trunk. You just get a feeling, don't you? So I'm just going to work my way through this tree, finding areas to put the darkness in. And don't forget that the, of course, the tree branches will start off a little thicker and then thin right out.
for the last sort of few stages, it's just about finding little gaps to fill in. So I'm just using the same sort of mixes, but much more dilute. We'll just fill in that at the bottom there. Maybe just a little bit more darkness in the corners. Also maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre into this slightly stronger mix to raise it up a little bit by painting a line. And now I'm going to change my water over fresh water and I'm going to paint a bit of shadow in uh, a bit of sort of classic shadow so it's more of a bluey tone so that's just Payne's grey mixed in with what we had going earlier and I'm going to do a few things so I'm going to use my size zero brush to begin with this might be a little fiddly I'm going to add in a bit more actually there then a bit more just sort of under each window pane Then we've got the actual shadow of the tree, so I'm going to just bring that in there. I'm not going to get too bogged down with the exact placement of everything, but what I will do is just dab a bit of colour. where it feels like it would be. And this can also count for the actual uh, tree itself. Um, it's getting a little bit in there. So the sun is very much sort of coming from the front, I suppose. Um, so I'm going to take a A little brush and I'm also just going to find little areas on the tree but not too much I don't want too much here I'm looking for the areas sort of just roughly around where say there might be a, a branch there we go a branch of poking through underneath I think a lot of people worry when I start to add shadow. They think, oh no, don't ruin it. But trust me, it really does make all the difference in making it pop off the page. So we're going to let that dry one last time and then we're going to rub out the pencil. Having rubbed out the pencil, it gives it just the most wonderful lift and it means that I can now go in and do one or two tiny little extra bits of detail doing a few tiny sort of dabs of texture on the tree and then the window I think looks absolutely gorgeous um, I don't think it needs really anything at all because the whole point of it is it is sitting sort of in the background but if you wanted we could just add the tiniest hint of detail just capture the little window panes there. But honestly, don't go over the top because I think that is just lovely. So there you are, a lovely cherry blossom tree. And if you liked that and want more of that kind of thing, don't forget to check us out on Patreon. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you're sharing your work on social media, tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. I'd love to see your paintings. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again next time. Bye.